while back, I made a video where I went into the best budget blow dryers that are on the market today. At the time, I had only owned one of the dryers from the video, and that was the Shillandy. Although I had actually used all of those blow dryers at least once during the course of my history of grooming, which has been for the last 15 years. But let me say that using them and owning them are two very different things. Because when you're using them in your shop on a daily, weekly basis, you really get to know how well these dryers do perform. But after I made that video, I actually went out and purchased the Shernbo because it just blew me away with its stats. Am I saying that right? Shernbo, Shernbow? I, I don't really know how to say that word, but whatever it is, I bought it. Now I've been using these dryers both very regularly and they both work really well, but I started to wonder, how do they actually compare to each other? Well, I love a good experiment. So I used my own dogs, much to uh, their dismay. I gave them a good bath with shampoo and conditioner, rinsed them really well, gave them a good towel dry, and then I blow dried them. Half with the Shillandy, and then their other half with the Shernbow. Shernbow. <gasps> so I'm gonna go over all the details and break down the results, so stick around to find out how these two fantastic blow dryers yeah. compare to one yeah. another. Now I am gonna throw in some disclaimers here. Obviously it's an experiment and there's a lot of factors when it comes to an experiment. And I think it's really important to point these things out. So as I mentioned, I chose to do half and half, one side of them with the one blow dryer, the other side of them with the other. Obviously, there can be issues with this method, but I'll explain to you why I chose this route. But I'm going to get to that in just a minute. So I felt like doing the whole dog with one blow dryer, waiting a while, and then rebathing them and doing them with the other blow dryer was going to end up in more skewed results than doing the method of half and half, and let me explain how. So one of my biggest issues with that method would be that my dogs are shedding dogs, and once you blow out a coat, it can affect how quickly they dry the next time. So if you give them a bath, let's say a week later, so if I use the Shillandy first for that first bath, waited a week and then rebathed them and then dried them with the Schoenbau, I think that because it's already been blown out all that coat, it would have taken longer for the Shillandy under those circumstances. And then what's left over for the Schoenbau to take care of is so much less hair to actually remove and to dry that you're gonna just end up with just skewed results, as I said. So I didn't think that was gonna go well. It would just give it an inherent advantage that I just thought would really mess with things. So even if I waited a month, let's say, and then rebathed them and gave them a blow dry with the other dryer, you know, obviously the shedding changes, you know, it, it has so many factors, plus seasonal changes can affect shedding as well. So, you know, skin and coat health can be different from one bath to another, you know, how dirty they get in between, which can all impact drying. Like these all are factors that do determine the outcome of the time it takes to blow dry a dog. So to try and make it even Stevens on both sides, kind of making them, you know, as much identical as you can possible, doing it on the same day, so that one side and one side method seem to be I suppose the best route to the most definitive answers that I could come up with. But obviously, you know, this has flaws as well when you do it this way, but let's just get into the process and we'll kind of talk through that. So I started out with my dog Otis. Now he is a border collie and cattle dog mix. So he has kind of like a short to medium length in some areas on him, usually like around his neck is a little fluffier, his butt's a little fluffier, but most of him is like a short to medium length, let's say. And also because he is part cattle dog, the way cattle dog coats wore bread, it was to be very weather resistant. So he does like wick water really well. So if he gets wet, he dries out really incredibly quickly. So that is a factor as well for him. And because of that, I worried about using the Shillandy first. And this is because the Shillandy creates quite a bit of heat with it. And I worried that that residual heat from blow drying him on the first side would affect how dry his other side was gonna be. So I opted to do the Schoenbau first in order to try and, I guess, prevent that from disrupting, I guess, the overall results of the 
experiment. So important to note, I did use the flat nozzles for both the Shilandi and the Schoenbaum, the one that they come with, and they are quite similar to one another. So I'm going to explain. When I was doing the experiment, I would dry that side of the dog to 100% dry. Now what happens when you're blow drying a dog is a lot of the time when you're, you can turn them to do the other side, you can get splash back from the other side as well. You can get, um, you know, if you're drying them in the tub the way I did, you know, if they lean against a wall, it could be damp. So that means that at the end, you're going to have to turn them back around and, you know, go over some areas. But I only counted the time spent on the one side until the one side was 100% dry and didn't bother with calculating, you know, flipping them around and having to redo anything. It was just to get that side 100% dry. And then that's where I stopped counting. Also, both dryers were on maximum speed and they both had the heating element turned on as well. So I try to make them as similar as possible. Now, Otis is actually quite a good dog as well uh, in terms of he doesn't really sit down. He stands for the whole duration. He doesn't lean too much. So he's kind of a good candidate to get kind of a good idea of, you know, is this dryer going to take longer than the other one because he do himself doesn't affect the outcome of a dry too much by, you know, some of them like to lay down, some of them like to sit, some of them like to lean really far. So that can all be factors in how long it takes to dry a dog. He is pretty neutral to stand there and he's very still. So he was a good candidate. That's why I pulled him in first. So let's go over the first side and how long it took with the Schoenbau on Otis. So it actually clocked in at a mere four minutes and 54 seconds with the Schoenbau, so pretty good. Then I flipped him over and did the same thing with the Shilandi and that side got 100% dry as well. And that took seven minutes and one second. So that only really comes down to a two minute and seven second difference for between each side, which comparatively is not that bad, especially considering the difference in power between the two dryers, but I'm gonna touch on that later as well. So after I finished Otis, so I went into this experiment being like, oh, I'll try it on Otis, see how it works out. But then I started to consider that maybe because his coat, as I mentioned, wicks water so well that perhaps, you know, it could be a reason why the difference between the two dryers was so small compared to the difference in horsepower between them. So unfortunately for my dog, Lottie, she was next up because I had to try it out on her. She is a border collie, so she has a longer and thicker coat. So her length of coat as well is longer. She's like a medium to long length of coat and she has a lot of it. She's very thick, just like Otis shampoo, condition, and then good towel dry as well. And then it's onto the blow drying. There were no changes in terms that of the nozzle, the speeds, the heating settings, everything stayed the same except the dog, obviously. <laughs> but the other main difference between the first one and the second one is that this time, because I had decided to use the Schoenbaum first and then go in with the Shilandi, I thought, well, you know what, we might as well switch them, see if that makes any difference as well. So I went in with the Shilandi first go on Lottie, and then when I flip sides, I used the Schoenbaum. All right, so without wasting too much time, let's get into the results. So on the first side that I did dry with the Shilandi dryer, it clocked in at 11 minutes and 44 seconds. Then when I moved on to the other side with the Schoenbaum, and I do have to apologize really quickly for my video here because I ended up hitting the wrong button and instead of resetting it and timing it as normal as I did in the other videos, I ended up doing a lap somehow. It still did give me the results, but it's just going to look different on your screen. So that side clocked in at eight minutes and 16 seconds for the Schoenbau, which all together is a difference of three minutes and 28 seconds. So honestly, it was a little bit shocking. And I figured that I would just take these numbers and start running with them to see kind of what can that tell us about the differences between these two machines. So let's get into a little bit of nerdy details here because I love this kind of stuff. 
So for every one of the Schoenbau dryer, Shilandi takes approximately 1.42 seconds to do the same amount of work. Now the average difference between the Shilandi and the Schoenbau is 167.5 seconds per side of the dog, approximately two minutes and 48 seconds, which translates to a total of five minutes and 36 seconds on average between the two different coat types. So that's, if you want that in seconds, that's 335 seconds difference between the two machines. And it obviously goes without saying, the Schoenbau is just consistently faster across both dogs, but here's where I think things kind of get kind of interesting with this. Because the two machines have different motors, air speeds, horsepower, and the Shilandi is actually significantly smaller in terms of all of those things, including the motor and the horsepower it produces, the differences were not striking, that's for sure. So the Schoenbau has a 5.0 horsepower motor in it, and the Shilandi only has a 3.0 two horsepower motor and the time difference suggests that obviously yes the Schoenbau is indeed faster but not by a massive margin considering the horsepower difference. The Schoenbau is expected to be significantly more powerful yet the Shilandi is still performing at about 70 percent the, of the Schoenbau speed so 1.42 seconds versus one second so I mean, that's not a huge difference considering. In general, the performance gap between the two dryers isn't as large as you would expect from such a horsepower difference. This actually could indicate that the Shilandi is particularly efficient in using its horsepower, or maybe that the extra horsepower that the Schoenbau has is not maybe translating into a proportionately larger speed advantage. So. Here is my final takeaways from this experiment. If you are prioritizing efficiency, the Shilandi seems to be holding quite well on its own. So here's the thing. I do find it heats up to a higher temperature than the Schoenbau, and here's when this dryer would be the best bet. So, I mean, if you're looking for aside from efficiency, which you know, that's really, nobody's like, oh, this one's more efficient. They, we want speed, we want power, but when can we use it? That's the thing. If you have a smaller dog, particularly one with a curly, wavy, or long coat, this dryer would be ideal, since particularly in smaller dogs, the difference in terms of time is going to be so minimal that upgrading to the Schoenbau time-wise, it's just going to be negligible. So, you don't need to spend the money to get almost the same amount of speed. And because of the heat aspect, it's going to really blow out that coat really nicely. So you actually don't need to use a stand dryer most of the time. It can create enough heat where this is going to really do a nice job blowing out the coat. So it's a wise investment, as I said, for smaller, especially longer curly coat dogs. That's really going to be where you get the most bang for your buck. However, if speed is your top priority and you really need the fastest drying times possible, the Schoenbau is obviously the better one out of the two here, as you would expect with the higher horsepower. So here's the scenarios where you'd want to get the Schoenbau over the Shilandi. And that is if you have a particularly large dog or a shedding dog, because you really need a lot of power to release all that excess undercoat. So that is where that's gonna come in handy. And as I said, larger dogs, ones that need haircuts. So again, curly, wavy coats, things like that. Even though it's not gonna produce as much heat, so produces less heat overall, you don't want a coat to sit damp. Particularly, as I said, curly or wavy coats, you don't want them to get, get stuck in that curly or wavy state by air drying. So if you have to take longer, and, and so you're doing one side and the other side is sitting there getting air dry, it's going to air dry in that state where it's curly or it's wavy, and that is gonna be harder to really blow out nicely later on if you have to blow it out from an air dried curly state and that's where that speed really comes in handy you definitely want to use this one if you want your dog to be as dry as quick as possible and as i mentioned we're talking about like 
want to think about certain breeds of dogs, standard poodles, doodles, Airedales, Bouviers. That's the kind of large, bigger, thicker, curlier coats that I'm talking about here or any shedding dog, as I mentioned, this is going to be the one you're going to want to pick up. You're likely going to need the extra heat at the end to go over and really get those curls to be straightened out, usually with a stand dryer if you're a professional. But if you're just doing baths in between at home, if you're just a pet owner, now this dryer is going to be fine even for a standard poodle or a doodle, anything with a curly coat, you can still blow dry them with the Schoenbau. You don't have to get them perfectly straight at home. It's just for a nice haircut, essentially. This is gonna work perfectly fine for you. Now, please drop me a comment below if you wanna see more of this experiment in terms of the differences between the two dryers. I'm happy to keep testing them to see how they perform under different circumstances. So let me know if you are interested in seeing something like that. Now that you might have your dryer picked out, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video right here to learn more about cordless clippers and the best ones on the market to help you get started with picking out the top of the line clippers of available for you right now.